Yeah, yeah, man, just studying. It's the hardcore studying all day. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So, do you have trouble studying? You get distracted by the TV? You find yourself on YouTube all day? I know you do. You're on YouTube right now. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to study better. Hey guys, Ron White here from Stanley Superhumans on the History Channel. There really is a way to study better and study more effectively. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my 10 steps on how to study better. Step number one, study for 25 to 50 minutes, then take a 10 to 15 minute break, go for a walk, play with your dog, do some jumping jacks, push-ups, just go get some fresh air, get your blood flowing, and then go back and study again for 25 to 50 more minutes. And repeat that until you're finished with your studying. Step number two, get six to eight hours of sleep the night after you learn something. According to Dr. James Moss, is if you get a good night's sleep, six to eight hours, the night after you learn something, the next day when you wake up, you will remember it better than if you had a poor night's sleep and not at least six to eight hours of sleep. Six to eight hours is actually known as the REM sleep. There are no, that two hour window, your brain will replay what it learned the previous day. And that's why you remember it better when you wake up the next day. If you do find yourself sleep deprived before you study, take a 15 to 30 minute nap, but no more than 30 minutes. Pretty simple so far, right? Let's move on to step number three. Take notes in class. And it's better if you take them yourself. Getting somebody else's notes and copy them is not the same. When you take notes in class, you are engaging your brain and you will remember more from that class. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Good. We'll go on to step number four. Step number four is clear your mind of all distractions. I used to hold the record for the fastest to memorize a deck of cards in the United States. And sometimes before I would memorize a deck of cards, my brain would be worried about things in my life or things that were going on. So what I would do to clear my mind of all distractions is I would close my eyes and I would visualize those scenarios the way that I wish they were or the way that I hoped they would be one day. And then I would open my eyes I would be relieved of that stress, and then I would memorize a deck of cards. Clear your mind of all distractions. Maybe close your eyes and visualize the things the way you wish they could be, and then focus on your studying. Great, let's move on to point number five. Five is the key word technique. And what this is, is if you find you're studying, your mind starts to drift or wander, use the key word technique. Let's say you're studying about Abraham Lincoln, and your mind starts to drift. Focus in on a keyword about the text you're reading and just say to yourself, Lincoln, 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 until your brain is once again focused on what you're reading and Abraham Lincoln. Pick a keyword out of the text. We're halfway there. Step number six is to learn the most important ideas first. If you're looking at a book, sometimes at the beginning, they'll have learning objections, or maybe at the end, they'll have a recap. Look at those recaps. Look at those bullet points. Those are often the most important details that the book or the professor or teacher wants you to learn. Learn those first and look for those details whenever you're reading or whenever you're studying. Learn the most important things first. All right, guys, moving right along to point number seven. Number seven is look at the back of your book and see if there is a list of terms or a glossary or definitions. If so, familiarize yourself with those or even memorize them. It'll give you a greater understanding of the material that you're reading in the book. All right, guys. Now, number eight, this is kind of a weird one, but just bear with me here and try this. Next time you're studying, get some gum and chew it as you're studying. Then when you are taking the test, get that same flavor of gum, chew that gum during the test, and scientific studies will prove that that will be a brain trigger that will trigger your mind to actually remember what you were reading and what you were studying the last time you were chewing that gum. I know it's weird, but give it a try, I think you'll be surprised. All right, we're almost there. Point number nine, for lack of a better word, pretend or try to trick your brain into thinking that whatever you're reading is a plot to a movie or a plot to a TV show. Because let's face it, sometimes what we're learning just isn't that interesting or it's just not that fun. So maybe if you can trick your brain into thinking this is a plot to a movie script or a TV show, you'll actually get more interested in it and it'll be more exciting and you'll pay attention more. 
Number 10, I saved the best for last. This is my favorite one. This is the memory technique that I use to become a two-time USA memory champion. You can use these same techniques to study and memorize your homework. It's called the Mind Palace. This is what you do. Stand in the doorway of every room in your home and memorize one, two, three, four, five pieces of furniture in, in, in each room. Even do this in your classroom. See, you're sitting in your desk in your classroom. And when you're sitting in your desk, look around and pick 10 items around the classroom. Maybe one is the the board at the front of the room. Maybe another one is your teacher's desk. Another one might be the flag or a chair or a computer or a bookshelf. And number five to 10 spots all the way around that room. Then you take the information you're learning and you visualize it around the class. Let's say this is a chemistry test and you need to memorize the noble gases, the elements on the periodic table that are known as noble gases. Well, the first one is helium. So you turn that into a picture and maybe the first location in your room is the board. So you imagine balloons are all around that board and they lift the board up into the sky. Let's say the next piece of furniture in that room is your teacher's desk. Well, the next noble gas is neon. So you turn that into a picture and you see neon lights all over your teacher's desk. You would do that with pieces of furniture going all the way around the room, turning each one of the noble gases into a picture. Then when you're taking your chemistry test and it says to write out the noble gases, you look up from the test and you write, you see balloons and you write helium. You look at your teacher's desk and you remember there was neon light there, so you write neon. And you would go around the room writing out all the answers. The teacher will look at you and she'll say, hey, stop looking out the window. The answer's not on the window. Yes, it is. You got answers all the way around the room. This is known as the Mind Palace. If you would like to build your own Mind Palace and ace every test from now on with ease and no stress, just click the link right here to get my training on how to build your own Mind Palace or click the link below. You'll be glad you did. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Have you built your own Mind Palace yet? If not, don't forget to get the information right here to build your own Mind Palace and memorize what you study. And also subscribe to the videos, we've got tons more of great, cool, awesome videos and you're not going to want to miss them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.